Hello everyone, Puneet Grover here. So before learning Room Database, we should know why Room Database, why Room Database came into the picture. So earlier to store data in Android, we used to use SQLite, but it was time taking to write everything manually like database operations, migrations of data. It was a bit difficult and we had to write lots of boilerplate code to achieve these operations. But now we have Room Database, which is a wrapper over SQLite. It not only reduced the amount of boilerplate code required to achieve these operations, but also it does compile time checking of your database queries. That means it saves your time. It saves your applications being crashed at runtime or when your application is released to production. With that, it also can return observables or live data queries. All in all, Room provides higher level, easier to use APIs that can be used for Android application development database purposes. So today we will understand about Room database step by step. Either you are a fresher or an experienced person, this video is for you. So do not skip this video because every step is equally important. And here we not only understand about the Room database, but we will also get to know about the mistakes developers do while using room database also we will understand how can we inspect the tables in the room database with the help of android studio so there is so much to learn in this video so firstly let's go to the screen understand room database quickly and then we will proceed step by step so here i have created one sample project for room database where i have added the dependencies of the room database you can see here and Kotlin coroutines. Let me tell you in room database or in any of the database operations to prevent queries from blocking the UI room doesn't allow database access on the main thread. Okay. In that case, we have to use some mechanism to execute the queries of the main thread. And that is why I am using coroutines here. You can use async task. You can use RS Java or you can use the latest Kotlin coroutines. I have already created one video on the core routines. If you don't have an idea on core routines, I would say please go through with that video. I will give the link of that video in the description of this video. You can go through that. Okay, now let's go to that. I have also created the UI for this to save the time. Let me quickly explain about the UI. We have two edit text, three buttons. It is just to insert the data delete the data and query the data that means covering three database operations here with the help of room database so now we have our ui ready now let's discuss about the primary components of room database so see there are three components we basically should know one is database class one is about the tables that is your entity and third is your DAO, data access object Database class is the one who holds the database and serve as the main access point for your apps persisted or stored data. Now second is entities. Entities here represent tables in your apps database. And third is DAO that is data access object. It provides methods that your app can use to query, update, insert, and delete data in the database. So these three are the primary components of your room database. Now let's practically see how can we use these components. Let's firstly create one table. So now our motto is to insert user data, delete user data and query the user data. That means we have to create user table. And I just explained that here entity represents the table. Now let's quickly create entity here. Let's create one package. Let's say entity. Now let's create one class here. So let's see how can we do that. So every entity should have an annotation here that is entity. Here one point to note is either your class name will treat as a database table or you can explicitly define the table name by using the table name. For example, I want to have user as the table name. Now, I want to have a data class for that. So I can create a data class. Now, I want three things here. One is 
user name that is string one is address that's also type string now one important thing here to note is that every table should have one primary key as well let's have a one id with it now how can we define the primary key here primary key this is so simple this is how we can create a primary key here now if i want this id to be auto generated for that i can use auto generate is equal to true so that's it this is how we can create a table here or you can say the schema of your database that means this entity corresponds to a table in the associated room database and each instance of an entity represent a row of the data in the corresponding table okay now our second important component is dao let's create one package as dao and create one dao here user dao now very important thing here to note is that we can define each dao as either an interface or an abstract class so let's create interface now every dao include methods that access to our database now how can we define the dao we have to use annotation as d a o there's it we have the dao here so now we need three functions one for insertion one for deletion and one for query right let's see how can we do that let's firstly create one function for insertion fun insert now what it will insert it will insert that table that means your user table right this is how we can define the function and now we have to use insert annotation here we can pass if there is any conflict then use on conflict strategy dot ignore that means if there is a conflict while inserting the data then ignore that conflict so this is how we can create the function here now which i had already told that we have to use coroutines to execute the database queries of the main thread and that is why i will be using the suspend here so now we have insert query now let's see how can we delete the data let's create one function for that as well and for that we just have to use query yes and here i can write query to delete the data from the table this table user table now our third function is how can we query the data or how can we get the data for that let's use get users and it will return the list of user type data that means it will give us the list of users here i will use the again query and then select statement select everything that means select star from user there's it we have a query here now one more thing which i already told you that we can return the live data or observable as well from the queries right and how can we do that function get users data then it will return the live data type list of user and here also we will have to use query same approach select star from user here one thing you might have noticed is i have not used suspend here like the way i used here because if i am using live data or for observable queries we don't have to use suspend it internally does that now let's create third component or last component that is your database class let's give it a name as user database now this database class will hold the database and it must be annotated with database annotation and this will include the entities array associated with the database and third important thing here is this class must be an abstract class that extend the room database i'll show you how first let like that this should be an abstract class and then it should extend the room database and then it should be annotated with database annotation which will have entities array and our entities are user class right let's give the version as this is the first version and this is how we can create the database class now second important thing here is every dao that is associated with the database then database class must define an abstract method 
that has zero arguments and written an instance of the DAO class. That means every database will contain each doubt that is associated with the database, but without arguments and written an instance of the DAO class. Let's see how can we do that. So here we have one user DAO. Let's create one function for that, which will return user DAO. And this should also be abstract because we are not implementing it. So now why did we create this DAO here? Because we want to access our functions in the DAO and this will go through via our database. So the route will be, firstly we will create instance of the database and from the instance of the database we will call DAO and from the DAO we will call functions of DAO to execute the database queries. So this is how the flow will go. Now let's quickly create the instance of the database. And for that we will use companion object here because database operations are expensive and for that we have to use singleton design pattern. Let's quickly give the name of the database and declare the instance of the database. Here let's create one function to get the database instance. It will require the context here. Let's return this instance inside the synchronized Log. So no more than one thread get the different instances of the room database. Let's create the instance of the room database as see this is the point to notice here room dot database builder context dot application context then it requires the database class we had created and database name after that we just have to call the build function so it is using the builder design pattern and give the instance to instance perfect and return the instance and here return type should be user database perfect we have our database class ready now our ui is ready let's quickly create the variable to access the views we are using data binding here again i hope that you are getting good insight on room database but if you have any questions don't forget to write down in the comment section here i have created three click listeners for all three buttons one is to insert one is to delete and one is to show the data now let's see how can we create the database instance here private well database let's use lazy here i'm hoping that you know the meaning of lazy already this is how we can we have user database class dot get database this is the function we had created earlier we have to pass the context perfect this is how we can create the instance of the database and let's create the instance of the DAO as well use lazy here once again and how can we get the instance of the DAO by using the database class and the function we already created this is why we need DAO in the database now let's see how can we insert the data in the database let's firstly get the name in the edit text which user had input and same let's get the address as well. Now here we will insert the data in the database. I already told that we have to use coroutine here. So let's use coroutine and we use dispatcher as a IO dispatcher we use the coroutine builder launch. If you don't know about the coroutines, I have already created one video on the coroutine and you can go through with that as well. I have given the link of coroutine in the description of this section. Now, how can we insert the data? Firstly, we'll have to use the user DAO. There we had created one function insert. There we have to pass the user class. And here the name will be the name we have got from the edit text and the address will be the address user has added here in the form and that's it this is how we can insert the data in the database this is very very simple now let's see how can we show the data let's create one function to show the data so we have two options to show the data one is use the observable query and one is without observable query let's see how can we do that use coroutine scope here once again dispatcher io launch now we need users list so i'll use users dao dot get users it will give me the list of the users this is what we are using for now now i want to show the data we have got from the database in some ui component let's switch to the main thread if users list dot is empty 
then don't do anything otherwise let's iterate over the list use for each loop you can use any loop you want let's use lambda here well name would be user dot we are getting the name and not the address here now let's show the name here user dot name let's use anything welcome whatever the name to coding with puni let's show that in the text view let's make the visibility as true and then text as and if list is empty then let's set the visibility as false and text as empty text now let's run the application and see how it looks go so our application is ready let's enter name as puni from karnal and submit that now how can we see if data is inserted successfully or not let's click on the show code see welcome puneet to coding with puneet this puneet has come from the data we have inserted now one important thing here i want to show all of you see carefully how can we inspect the database if we go to the app inspection let's select the processes which we have already here we have database inspector and there we have user table and there it is created id one name puneet and address is karnal this is how you can verify if database is created or not if table is created or not and if data is successfully inserted or not or all other operations of your database now let's quickly see how can we delete the data from the database let's again use coroutine scope dispatchers dot io dot launch and again user dao dot delete all this is how we can delete the data from the database let's run the application now okay so our application is ready we have the database let's click on the delete all so database operation has been executed let's verify go to the app inspection database inspector user table and see we have no data left in the database table so this is how we can verify the database or you can say inspect the database now let's quickly insert one more value for example youtuber anyway let's insert that if you can see here one row has been added now let's see how it looks welcome youtuber to coding with me let's close the application and quickly open it once again if you can see here it is not automatically shown until unless i click on the show all now this is where observable queries comes into the picture so let's do one thing we have user dao dot get users data this is and this is the observable query and this is where we don't require coroutines because we have not used the suspend here if you remember now let's observe this query now let's copy paste the same thing we have done to show the data that's it so this should automatically shown to the user once we run the application or once we go to the same activity or screen let's run the application to see how it works so now you can see we have not tap show all it is automatically shown because it is observing the query so this is how we can use the observable queries in room database now let's discuss about the mistakes developers often make while implementing room database in android first is over using the live data while live data is a useful tool for observing changes in the room database over using it can lead to performance issues and an increase memory footprint so we should take care of that second is not using the singleton pattern room should be used as a singleton to avoid multiple instances of the database and to ensure consistency so these two are the major concepts so we should avoid such cases while implementing the room database so thank you so much guys i hope that you have learned a lot about the room database and have got good insight on that still if you have any queries you can write down in the comment section i will reply as soon as possible and if you really like this video and want more such videos like that please do subscribe to this channel and keep supporting us